Hey everybody, welcome to this video. What I want to do is give you a recap of some of the announcements from Microsoft Ignite March 2021. So let's dive into what has happened. Um, there's definitely been a lot of announcements and I think I've picked out maybe 10 or 11 different announcements to talk about that I think are actually quite interesting that might have been missed in amongst all the other announcements. So let's dive into the announcements. <laughs> So the first announcement I want to mention is that we've announced a new data centre region in northern China. So it's always exciting when we have new data centre regions announced for Azure and this is due to growth within the Chinese region. So again, another exciting announcement. I think this takes us well over the 65 plus. Potentially we might even be hitting the 70 mark in terms of um, either announced or available data centre regions. But it's great to see the growth of Azure and the, and the company as a whole. Now we've got a bunch of features that I've been looking at that have went generally available so that means that they are now available in production, fully supported and you can use them without any issues. Now the first one I want to talk about is Azure Resource Mover. Now Azure Resource Mover is something that I, I saw announced last year at Ignite in um, September 2020. And it's the ability to be able to help you move your resources. So for example, if you currently have your data center resources in another region um, in Asia and you want to take advantage of that new northern China data center when it comes on live, you can actually use the Azure Resource Mover to help you coordinate all of that moving from one data center to another. And I think it's really key to understand the Azure Resource Mover helps you do that coordination. Right now, we do have the ability to move resources between different places, between resource groups, subscriptions, data centers, but it's not a consistent approach. And that's where Azure Resource Mover comes in. It helps make that consistent approach for you to be able to plan, test, and implement the actual move of your resources. So if you haven't checked it out, do check out Azure Resource Mover. I did do an Azure Unblogged interview with the product team um, a few months ago. So I'll link that so you can go and check it out. But again, it's another great product and I'm glad to see that it's went generally available. Now, something else that has went generally available is the Azure Backup Center. Now, the Azure Backup Center is the ability to look at all of your backups in one portal. So it's that single pane of glass for your backups. Now it was announced, I think again, at Ignite in September 2020, and it's now went generally available. So it's there for you to use, and there's a lot of features and functionality. I had a first peek at it um, back in September or October last year, and the features that's even come out since then have grown. So definitely check it out and see how it can help you with the management and overview and monitoring of your Azure backups. Now, the third thing that I want to talk about that's went generally available is the ability to assess your workloads from your on-prem VMware environment and understand what they would look like and how much they would cost if you were to host them in the Azure VMware solution that we have, or AVS as we call it. And again, this is something that was announced in preview a few months ago and has now went generally available. So you can actually use the part of Azure Migrate to assess what your workloads look like on-prem in their VMware state and what they would actually look like if you were to move them to the VMware supported and endorsed solution that we have in Azure. So again, another great feature for customers who are looking to migrate their workloads into Azure. Now, I think the last bit of generally available news that I want to talk about is Azure Arc Kubernetes um, that you can use now. And you can use Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes to manage and govern all of your Kubernetes clusters from that single location. And again, I think this is great from a management point of view. If you have multiple workloads spread across different clouds, multiple platforms, you don't want to be juggling different windows. You don't want to be juggling different management planes. So the ability to actually manage your Kubernetes clusters, regardless of where they are from within Azure is a great feature for a lot of organizations and being able to extend some of the Azure capabilities down onto your on-prem environment as well. So again, another great feature. Azure Arc has certainly grown since it was announced. Not sure how long it's been out yet, but Azure Arc is definitely growing. There's definitely lots of interesting features there 
this year. Um, I also think that they um, announced preview for machine learning to, would be at Azure Arc. So again, managing all of your machine learning workloads from that single plane of glass within Azure Arc. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely do check that out and see how it can help your environment. Now let's talk about some other things that have went preview. And one of the things that I noticed was in September 2020 at Microsoft Ignite, we announced Azure Auto Manage which is a streamlined way of helping you to manage your workloads. So you don't really have to really understand a lot of the management of working within your virtual machines. Within Azure, you can kind of walk through this portal within Azure Auto Manage and say that you want your machines patched, you want them monitored, you want them backed up, and it all implements for you. So you, you can walk through a wizard and have all your workloads kind of managed and monitored for you um, without having to go into all of these individual places. And I think it's great for maybe small businesses where they don't have um, a lot of staff and they want to streamline their workloads. So Azure Auto Manage is currently in preview, but what we've seen announced here at this Ignite is that the Auto Manage now supports Linux workloads as well as your Windows workloads. So again, a great feature for companies to help streamline and set up best practices for their virtual machines within Azure. So again, check it out if you haven't already. I did do a first look video at Azure Auto Manage back in October. So I'll link to that so you can have a, a look at it and see what I'm really talking about and how it can be leveraged within your organization. Now, I'm a big fan of Windows Admin Center. I'm sure you've probably heard me talk Talk about it before if you've watched any of my videos or read any of my blogs but I love the ability to do all of those Windows server or, or server tasks that you have to do when you're managing servers from that one single pane of glass and I think there's a theme running through here everything is about streamlining your management of your services no one wants to have multiple windows open I know back in the day I used to have thousands of RDP windows open MMC snap-ins even browser windows in order to interact with servers and it wasn't fantastic Windows Admin Center allows you to just do all of those win those tasks that you need to carry out changing certificates stopping and starting services you know checking file sizes, checking if you've got any disk space left, all of those kind of good things in one place. What we've seen the team announce at this Ignite is that Windows Admin Center within the Azure portal is now publicly available. It's currently in a public preview, but it is there for you to use. It was in private preview a few months ago, but now it's public. So again, another fantastic feature to help you streamline that management of your Azure virtual machines from Windows Admin Center. So I'm gonna be taking a look at that in more depth and seeing how to use it and how you enable it. So definitely um, hit that subscribe button if you wanna see that video in the future. Now talking about Windows Server, a few weeks ago, we actually announced that Windows Server 2022 is in public preview. So it's in part of the Windows Insider program that you can download and try. Now, the naming has confused a little bit of uh, people because we talked about not having um, dates or version numbers within our products anymore. But we've just called it Windows Server 2022 in order to distinguish between the current versions and just show you this. And it's currently in preview, as I said. So please download it. Try it within your test environments. See what it does. See if there's any bugs. See if there's any features that need to be changed or amended and feed that back. It's part of the Windows Insider program. So Hopefully everybody has a go at it and then give some feedback so that we can get the, the actual version is much more what you want it and isn't, um, you know, be bug featured or whatever. So definitely check out Windows Server 2022 um, and get that deployed within your test environments. But please don't deploy it within your production environments because it is a preview insider build. Now, staying on the theme of kind of hybrid and multi-cloud and, and management of all of that, the cloud adoption framework within Azure has actually released some new guidance, some new best practice around how to implement that hybrid and multi-cloud approach if that's one that your organisation is going down. Um, I've been talking to the team about that within the Azure Enablement Show, so again, I'll post a link you can get more information around all of that. But it's great to see the cloud adoption framework grow um, from that modular framework that we've seen just just talking about how your cloud adoption journey is and how to you know set up naming conventions and tags and cost management grow as our customers journey grow as well so again another great resource to bookmark and see how it can help you within your your custom your organization strategy and moving forward with your cloud adoption 
Now I think last bit of Azure news before we move on to Microsoft Teams is that coming soon is the Azure Bastion Scalable Gateway that will allow you to be able to scale up to have more concurrent sessions when you want to use Azure Bastion to manage your virtual machines and be able to scale down once the demand is no longer there. Now Azure Bastion is one of those features that I do love to use. Um, it, it stops you having to enable, say, port 3389 on your Windows servers um, and having that port closed because everybody knows about that port and it's one that um, hackers and vulnerabilities attack. So without having Azure Bastion in front of a Windows server, you probably have to have port 3389 and open to be able to RDP and jump into it. With Azure Bastion, it sits in front of your virtual machines and acts as that conduit, as that gateway to be able to access your server without opening port 3389. So the scalable gateway sounds really fantastic for organizations who have um, lots of lots of IT people trying to jump on servers or different use cases. So again, we excited to see um, that coming out. There's no announcement on dates or anything. It's just a coming soon, soon announcement. So yeah, we'll hopefully be able to jump on that once we actually get some more news about what that is and when it's available. Now I wanted to cover off some things about Microsoft Teams that were announced at Ignite. We've see, again seen a whole host of announcements about functionality within Microsoft Teams. Two that I picked out that I thought were actually quite good um, is the ability to have a, a good presenter mode within Teams. Now probably we've all um, had to present a PowerPoint presentation at some point over the last year or so within Teams and sometimes the experience isn't great. Um, you either lose the ability to see your notes and see your colleagues and see the chat or um, you have the ability to see the whole, whole of your PowerPoint presentation and notes and then completely lose the ability to actually see, see the Teams interface. The team have been working hard on that and we now have a better interface coming along where you can not only see your slides, you can see your notes, you can see the chat and you can start to interact with your fellow colleagues or you know attendees on a meeting. So again, great functionality that's coming along there to make that presenter mode if you're within Microsoft Teams, much better um, for everybody involved in the experience. Now, another feature that we're seeing is an invite only type meeting. So what this is, is everybody that's been directly invited to that Microsoft Teams meeting will automatically just join the meeting. If the invite has been forwarded to someone else who hasn't directly been invited, when they try to join the meeting, they will be put into the lobby and then they will have to be approved or admitted into the meeting. I think this is actually quite a good feature because it means that the meeting organiser is still in control of the meeting. Um, I'm sure we've all had a meeting that we've set up, forwarded to someone that we might not necessarily have wanted in that meeting. Um, and, and this kind of helps stop that or, or guards against it where the meeting organiser has access to admit or dismiss them from the lobby and not actually allow them in the meeting. I also think this is a feature that's coming out in Microsoft Teams for education, so it'd be great for teachers to be able to control that again if they don't want someone in their classroom for whatever reason. So yeah, there is a ton of announcements that have happened at Microsoft Ignite March 2021. Um, probably haven't even scratched the surface in terms of this recap but these are the ones that caught my eye and I wanted to share the story behind some of them so that they got the love that they deserved. There is definitely a ton more. There is a book of news that we've released that covers all of this plus everything else that I haven't even touched on so I'll put a link um, to that so you can have a look at it. It's definitely worth um, having a look at and seeing um, all the announcements and checking out which ones are relevant to your organisation. Please do like this video if you enjoyed the content. It will help surface it up to other people and show YouTube um, that it is a valuable video. And if you want to see more content from me, please do hit that subscribe button. Until then, everybody, see you soon.